to Dr. Aino Kanyati and my fellow friends. Okay, today I will present you about a topic that is maybe uh, hit home to you. Have you ever felt that uh, the smartphones and computer that you use is spying and watching you? Uh, maybe you have saw someone that has the laptop with the webcam, like the tape, uh, because they are they fear. Uh, that the, their computer is spying on them. So, today, uh, I will tell you about uh, actually, uh, this is a not a conspiracy theory because uh, as, the, as uh, revealed by the Edward Snowden in 2020, uh, the software that we use, such as the from Microsoft, Google, or Yahoo, is really spying on us. Uh, because uh, they, uh, okay, for example, uh, when we download software from the internet, usually uh, it comes as this without anyone uh, for for. Uh, there is no way for you or anyone uh, to study, to search for hidden backdoors or spyware. That is the fear of the unknown because we do not know what is the software or uh, the intention. Maybe the software, the first uh, reason why we download this, for example, uh, of this is to the right documents. But maybe there is the uh, hidden intention, for example. Okay, so what is going to be bit is that. Uh, this is uh, true. Uh, for your information, Snowden is the former contractor for the National Security Agency, uh, intelligence, uh, United States Intelligence Agency uh, that specializes in uh, mass surveillance. And the big uh, backdoor, uh, for example, in August 1999, a researcher from Rush University found out that uh, Windows the popular operating system that all of us use actually harbors backdoor for the NSA. The, the exact uh, controversy is the NSA key controversy. And uh, maybe you don't know what is the what is the backdoor. Backdoor. Uh, I give you uh, an analogy. If you own a house, that like everyone has a house. Uh, you live in the house and. Uh, there is back door, like a back door that you do not, you yourself do not have the keys uh, to it, but the government or the spy, or the intelligence agency have the keys to the door. Only they can open it. In theory, only can they uh, can open it. But uh, what happened is because every door that is not uh, can be broken by hackers, for example. So this is the uh, leaked slides from the intelligence agency. Uh, okay, so today I will tell you uh, what is the fundamental problem with the proprietary software. The software that we usually use in our computers and smartphones. And then I will tell you how to protect ourselves from these bad guys. Bad guys mean, uh, for example, uh, root governments, uh, spy agencies, and uh, something like that. And then I will tell you the consequences of not changing to the, the, the alternative that we tell you. Okay. So, when, uh, when the software that you download, for, uh, when you download a software, uh, Usually, it will come in the form of the binary code. Binary code is a, something that you uh, only computers can understand. Because it is in the form of 1 and 0 and 1 and 0. Uh, even the student that study computer cannot understand it, except when the uh, reverse engineer. And the, and the proprietary software restricts the Usually the license restricts the access to its source code. 
the source code is a, a human readable programming language that can, that can be understood by us, humans. For example, the one that is studied by the FCOM student, for example. So they study how to write the source code. But they didn't uh, they didn't uh, can can understand they didn't they didn't understand the binary code because it's the only one that is zero. Okay. For example, if you bought the Microsoft Office Home as Home as two thousand thirty ninety four one five hundred and thirty nine ringgit, what you get is the only the source code. That's me. If uh, the US government uh, decide to decide to put back door in the, the software, uh, Microsoft had to comply because it's the government that is requesting it. If they didn't comply, they have uh, they had so much to lose. So what they did, and the lessons uh, when you bought the the Microsoft Office, actually the lessons term only tells you the binary code and. It prohibits us from the source code. So this is what is called the proprietary software. We cannot study the source code, we cannot access the source code. Because uh, of copyright. Copyright is basically the reason why we cannot access the source code to protect copyright. Okay. So what happens is if we use uh, the because of it, for example, there is a possibility uh, uh, that the NSP has their back doors in it. Maybe you find it uh, funny because you paid for it, but you paid you paid for the software, but the software is not working for you. It's working for the government, and so it's used against you. Just imagine that you are paying the money and. The software is used against us to, to collect our data and breach our privacy. Maybe you uh, think that Microsoft is expensive, right? Uh, so maybe some of us uh, use the WPS Office. WPS Office is a free alternative uh, to the Microsoft Office. Now, let me tell you this. Uh, actually, the WPS Office is created by the Kisoft software headquartered in Beijing, China. And you know that uh, China has the very bad, the Republic, the People's Republic of China have very bad record, just like the United States, uh, in breaching the privacy. But uh, I, uh, this may be an accusation, but we don't know because we cannot study the source code of the WPS office, for example. Maybe you heard that like uh, Huawei is banned in the United States as of right now. Right? Because uh, the US government afraid that they have backdoors in it. Yeah. So this is what happened actually, the trade war. They are like, lagging that like, you is five years, I spy you. Okay, uh, then Okay, so why is it important for us to to care about this thing, about the software that the software is that mundane thing we just download and use okay, actually this software has a very tremendous control over our life for example that right now we are moving to the future where the future like every guy is like, self-driving like we put uh, we we constantly uh, surrender our like our big data like our everything. Even our smartphones right now have no everything about us. Because they know more about us than we know about uh, we actually know about us. So so what I said is the problem about the proprietary software. So the solution is to use the free software. Free software that I'm talking about is not about price. Like the the BPS office, the price is free, but it's not uh, it's not free in the sense of freedom. The free software that I'm talking about is about freedom. Free software 
is the program that grants us this freedom. The freedom to use the program uh, as we wish. And the program also uh, gives you freedom to study the how the program works. So you know, if there is a bad door, you know, uh, you can, for example, the, stu the, you know, the faculty of computing students uh, can study it. So the access to the source code is the precondition for the second, the first freedom. Just now the, uh, the zero freedom, because programmers start with zero. And the, the second freedom is to distribute the copies to others. And change it. And the, for, uh, the third freedom is to change the software and redistribute it. Uh, how do you, how do you how can you know that the software is a free software? So a free software is the software that uses the license. Uh, such as the GNU General Public License, the Mozilla Public License, or the European Union Public License. And actually, there is the foundation that is called Free Software Foundation that still watch uh, on, on the state of the software. We will not say uh, certain things because uh, we are afraid of the authority that is watching us. So this is very bad for the democracy and human rights. For this is the this is like the example of the 1984 novel by George Orwell that uh, stories about a dystopia where everyone, every home, has a telecommunication device that transmits. Everything inside their home happening into the uh, the in English insult a uh, a party that controls the, the the nation. So what happens is uh, every every thought and every thought thing that you think and everything that they do is very restricted, and that means they are they have become like a slave to the government. So what I'm proposing is to change from the proprietary software uh, to the uh, the free software. Okay, uh, for your information, uh, actually the first like uh, the precondition for the uh, become free software term is uh, is the access to the source code. So the other, another name for the free software is open source. <coughs> okay, for example, if you change uh, into the free software, what happens is uh, everyone will be more secure because uh, when we use the certain software, for example, uh, what happens is the network effect where, for example, I want to view uh, Dr. Aino's lecture. Because the, the Dr. Aino use this software, when I want to use, uh, when I want to view the lecture, the lecture, I need to also use that software. What example is like the herd immunity, where everyone uh, use the software that respect our freedom. And the change is uh, not very hard. But it's kind of a convenience because we are not familiar with the software. For example, maybe every one of you has used uh, the Open Office or the Mozilla Firefox or the VSC for things that you do right now. Because 
Maybe you don't know it as it's a free software, but that's one of the example of the free software that respect your freedom. And Windows 10, I come back to Windows 10. Windows 10, one of the observable uh, thing that you do not control Windows 10, you lose control over Windows 10, is the Candy Crush Saga. Maybe you have, maybe you have realized this, but every time, uh, for example, you buy a new computer, or you have installed uh, computers into the lab, you will, you will find the Candy Crush Saga. Candy Crush Saga, this is almost impossible to remove it. It's very funny because there's a lot of uh, tutorials all that of just how to remove Candy Crush Saga. This means the users have lost control over the software. Uh, basically, the Windows 10 has become a giant uh, app that connects your data and then it transmits it to the Microsoft servers to be uh, to be processed and they serve you apps to better suit their you know, if they want to get a higher profit margin. So, my hope is that not all of us will change to free software. Yes, uh, free software such as my, my example right here is the Pure OS, a GNU slash Linux operating system that respects your freedom. Uh, maybe the, the change will be not easy, I know, but if we, if we change to the free software, the more free software we use, the more secure we are. So I will leave you to conclude. Uh, I will leave you a quote by, the, by Richard Stallman, the founder of the free software movement the Free Software Foundation and the, uh, the GNU project, if the users don't control the program, the program controls the user. With the proprietary software, there is always some uh, entity, uh, the developer or the owner of the program, that controls the program, and through it, exercise power over its users. A uh, non-free software is a yield and instrument of unjust power. So a yield is basically like a wooden beam, like for slave or for Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you for listening.